how's that for a backdrop? I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I just wanted to update you on, yeah, this is Ducky, <laughs> on on how my, my new boxer is doing. <laughs> That's my boy. That's my boy. That's my good boy. That's my good boy. Okay. Anyway, um, so the power wagon, we're having some issues. Uh, here's a clip of me driving it. You guys will enjoy this. Runs pretty good, right? I bought this truck uh, almost two years ago now. Um, the guy that worked on it was a nine-year project, never finished it. Um, and uh, to be clear, to be fair to this guy, because he lied to me about this engine, um, uh, I would have bought this truck for the asking price that he sold it for without the engine. Look how clean this thing is. I mean, these are just some, some pictures of underneath, under the cab. Um, there's some shots of after the exhaust was done. Um, it was never driven. Uh, it didn't have any glass in it. Uh, it sat for a long time. But here's the deal. Here's where we are. I uh, wiped out a cam lobe. Here's a shot of the tapping first of the lifter. Number one. Number one exhaust valve. Uh, Shot of the oil pressure. I never lost oil pressure. It does have a higher volume oil pump in it. And then this is, um, you know, some fancy tools I have. A, a bore scope uh, going down into the um, lifter area, just kind of showing you what I had hoped at the time was just a collapsed lifter. And then this is a shot of the cam lobe. So it is not just a collapsed lifter, this cam lobe is wiped. So some arguments against doing a cam alone in a case like this is metal gets pumped through the engine. Um, and here's a shot of me taking the oil filter apart. And you see the, the just grayish tint, the metallic flakes that are in here. And then I see this blue paint that's all through this oil filter. And, and there, I noticed when I did the intake that there was some blue paint in the intake area and I thought that was pretty much where it, most of it came from. Um, but anyway, let's go a little further into this and what we see now is, I'm pulling the heads off. I wanna do some inspections of the cylinders and I don't like what I see here. I found rust spots uh, in a couple of the cylinder walls. And I believe the cause of this, remember this is a nine year project. I believe the cause of that is the engine sitting for possibly a year or longer at a time. And he kept it in an old barn outside. It wasn't in the weather, but it was outside. Uh, and this is what happens, I believe, when you let engines sit too long. It did not have a coolant burning issue. I was not losing antifreeze. I do not believe that this was from any type of head gasket problem. This is from it sitting for a long time. Next up, I pulled the oil pan and you know now we know where all the blue paint came from. For whatever reason, this guy decided he was gonna paint the inside of the oil pan. Like, why would you do that? I don't understand, don't understand. Uh, but I popped a couple bearing caps off some, uh, this is a shot of a, a rod and a main. And this is out of my area of expertise as far as reading what these bearings look like. Um, but the rust on the cylinder walls, yeah, this, this is now beyond my area of expertise. You guys that follow my channel understand and know that what I do is electronic and electrical systems troubleshooting and I don't get into engine repairs, not the deep engine repairs. Sure, I've done camshafts, sure, I've done timing belts and chains and head gaskets and you know, in the field when we would have head work done, we would never do anything with the valves. We would send that out, we'd pull the heads off, send it out, have the heads planed, 
if it needed any valve work done and then we'd have it shipped back to us and we'd reassemble it. So that was the extent uh, of my rebuilding engines in my career. The last time I rebuilt an engine or did any type of valve job was 30 years ago when I was in tech school. So, uh, so I'm, I'm out of my league and uh, I need a machine shop, right? We, we got we to gotta do something with this engine. Um, by the way, the flat tappet cams, uh, what I am being told is cheap Chinese metal being made with these cams today. And then the lack of zinc is what I'm being told by a lot in the community causes these cam uh, issues, the, the lifters to be wiped out. Uh, but there was only three to 4,000 miles um, since this cam was installed or since this engine was supposedly rebuilt. It was supposed to have 30 over pistons in it. Um, and we can see from my shots here that these are dished pistons. There's no stamping on them. They look like they're factory. Uh, by the way, this is a 72 413 wedge out of an RV. Out of an RV. So some of you Mopar guys think they stopped making the 413 in the 60s. You'd be correct. That would be for the cars. But they used them in heavy duty applications, uh, I believe, all the way up to 77 or 78. Um, and this was out of a motorhome. And uh, so here we are, right? This engine needs to be redone completely. Probably cylinders bored out and, and you know, the whole deal. Um, I'm looking for a machine shop now. Can't find one. I was denied. Um, actually, the one of the shops we used to use um, is no longer in business. Um, another shop I contacted never called me back. A third machine shop I actually stopped at and they just flat out told me they weren't interested. Um, they weren't, they don't do engine, uh, overhaul type stuff anymore. And they just weren't interested. Um, so with me searching online machine shops, then I start seeing, uh, this company, um, it's called, uh, Jim's automotive machine shop and they're in Colorado. Uh, and it is Jam Z Online, J A M S I, Jim's Automotive Machine Shop Incorporated. Um, I start watching some clips of these guys and what they do at their machine shop, and I was like, man, these guys are really good. And then I find out that it's a father and son duo. The son handles the social media side of things, and the dad's been doing this for 40 plus years, and they have their own machine shop. And you know, on a whim, I reached out to these guys, and I was like, hey. Are you interested? Will you work with me on doing this 413? And, and guys, when I reached out to them, I am in no way, shape, or form asking for any kind of discount. I'm not even worried about that. I was just hoping with my, my audience and my history and, and um, that maybe this guy would be interested uh, in that collaboration just so we can kind of grow each other's channels. That's that's my hopes there that he would reach back out to me and honestly he never he never even mentioned any of that he was he was super kind reached back out to me said he was interested and so i yeah i shipped my motor uh this is me building a a, a crate for my engine and um i am shipping this engine out to colorado to have them do it and the cool thing about this, guys, is we're going to be able to watch this whole process get done. I've pretty much given them free reign on what they want to do. Um, I've, I've set a budget on kind of what I wanted. Um, and, you know, I got to be honest with you. I, I think for me to be able to watch my engine getting done on film, um, you know, that's just priceless. I feel like I should be paying them more. But anyway, I've set a budget with these guys. They're excited to do it. Um, here's a, a clip of the first part of what they've done. 2951168. Oh, for sure. That kind of sounds like a Chrysler number. I don't see an oversized stamped on these. Now the bearings look terrible. Crank looks pretty good overall. This is a shot like three minutes in of a bent push rod. And yeah, that was me. I bolted everything back together and I bent that push rod. Totally my fault. 
I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't really care, I guess. I wasn't being super careful. I'm, I'm surprised that I did that. But that push rod was not bent until I bolted everything back together. So that was me. That one's on me. Uh, but he's pulling the bearings off, looking at things. Um, he mentioned a date on the back of the bearings that shows it's 1972. Um, he also mentioned that the pistons are original. Uh, and that the crankshaft itself looks like it's in pretty decent shape. This is an unmolested, an unmolested 413 from 1972 uh, is what this is showing us. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Hopefully be able to bore these cylinder walls enough to um, get rid of all those rust spots. I was reading some comments on, on his video and, and some of you guys are talking about the block for the 413 being the exact same block as the 440. It just has really thick cylinder walls and there's plenty in there to bore it out and make it a 440 size. I don't know, that's just some comments I was reading from you guys. But anyway, I'm excited to do this uh, engine rebuild with Jamzy online. And man, I want you guys to follow. So make sure um, that you pay attention to my community tab right here. Hit the bell icon for notifications. That way when a new video comes out from Jim's Automotive Machine Shop, uh, I will share that, I'll share the link, and then you guys will be able to jump over to their channel and watch the next step in the process. So where we are right now, I don't know. I'm waiting for them to contact me and let's talk about a plan on what we're going to do moving forward. And to be honest with you guys, your input is valuable here because I'm open to, to a lot of different options on what we're going to do uh, with this 413. But don't forget to go over there and watch their first video. It is them disassembling it. Uh, you saw some clips I pulled from it. Tell them I said hello. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and follow their channel. Hit the bell icon for them too so you're notified. And hopefully what we'll see is a little bit more oomph. When we're done, it'll be a little bit better than this run right here.